Oh my! We are live. Uh, yeah, but my split screen isn't split screening. All right, we are live. This is Literary Roadhouse. One short story once a week. I'm Anise. I'm Andy, and I'm Gerald. Okay, well, Gerald's depressed already. <laughs> Gerald did not enjoy the story at all. No, so, um. <laughs> That's probably our, the last you hear of me today. To our listener, Mark, who submitted three stories very excitedly with a lot of praise and really wanted us to love this, I am sorry for Gerald in advance. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah. Uh, so that said, I can understand why Gerald didn't love the story. I'm just going to go ahead and summarize it. It's um, – is it a man? An, an entity. I think they do use male pronouns. Yes, it uses male pro Well, because I think the story wants you to think it's a human being. And right. the plot twist is, ha, 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 it is a being. But right. more than that, more than that. Anyway, plot so twist. a man, right, yeah. So a man um, is in darkness, and he is all alone, and it's just nothing, and nothing exists, and there's no one to save him, and there are no doors. It is nothingness. Even though he never uses the word nothingness, that is what he's describing. And uh, he has a problem. He doesn't want to be lonely anymore. He doesn't want to be trapped in this nothingness anymore. So he um, he's cool because he's a scientist. So he's going to apply science to this problem. And there's really only one solution, which is to create uh, something in that nothingness. And then he says there will be light. And it happens. Wow. And he creates other entities and other beings somehow. But it's not described as magical. It's like, well, yeah. He doesn't what? create them. He becomes them from he splits himself into separate entities. Okay. I kind of like and, that. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes, Gerald. And how can you be a scientist? Don't you have to study to be a scientist? Like do exams well, and stuff. It, it, he studied everything that was in existence, which was himself. Which was nothing. <laughs> he had done it. And he declared himself a scientist because well, there was he, nothing else. But also he does say there's no data. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, there's nothing. He had a single um, point of data, and he built from there. Yeah. Which, you know, it's great because a lot of creationist mythos, not all of them, also have that single spark, as does the Big Bang Theory. So here we go. There's that. It, uh, it kind of goes with all the creation myths and theories. Okay. So we ever know Gerald didn't like the story. People who... Um, are listening to this and not watching it, he just sort of keeps shrugging. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I do, I'm afraid, I do keep looking out of the window looking for ducks that are, are coming. For two, ducks are so. good. Yeah, ducks are good. Again, um, gonna... But not necessarily of, of interest to our podcast listeners. Um, I don't know. You can describe the ducks if you see one. Yeah. Guys, Mark is here and Mark has said blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Is, is, Mark, I'm is it Mark? This story. Did he recommend it? Yes, he did. Oh dear. Okay. Uh -huh. Sorry, Mark. Um, Don't be sorry. <laughs> um, see, you see, my my problem is is that I I was born an engineer. I I was trained an engineer. I've been an engineer all my life. I I do stuff that I can see, and I can I can manipulate and I can put together and take apart. It's it's theoretical stuff like this. I can't grasp it. I can't. My head doesn't work. I, I can't. I try to understand, and I just can't. So, sorry. It just, yeah. Okay. Andy, are you with Gerald, or are you somewhere else? Okay, here's, I have a different take. Oh. It's not a wild departure. This is the shape of a story that I would like. This is the, it looks like the form of a story that is a story I would like. But the problem, I think, is as follows. This story was published in April of 1956. And then in November of 1956, Isaac Asimov published The Last Question, which is the same story, but objectively better in every single way, <laughs> which is about an AI asked, how do you reverse entropy? And over millions of years, eventually is like, ah, let there be light. Uh, so, Mark, you should definitely read the last question because that's great. Um, <laughs> also, if you're into the here's a god who splits himself into other 
things creator and he becomes his creation, you should check out The Egg by Andy Weir. Oh, Also great. Much Ooh. better versions than this story did. Both okay. published after this story, though. So do I have some sort of... This is what I wrestled with. Do I have some sort of obligation to like this story as being the the ground from which future stories spring? And I think the answer is no, I don't. Mm-hmm. It can I, I take it as it is now, and it's an inferior version of future stories. Okay, I would argue that this is a more accessible story than some of those because the last question is really difficult to... Oh. Yes, it is. We discussed it on this podcast. Yes, it is. It's more difficult because... Just got vacuum two bay eyes. It's fine. <laughs> like it's just harder to get to. Um, it's too easy to get distracted with the idea of machine evolution, that Futurama episode, uh, and get away from what this story is doing. Well, I feel like this story is a little bit tighter in exactly what it sort of wants to communicate. Yeah. But then looking, okay, maybe if I had read this story in 1956, I would have been in surprise. But reading this story in, was it 2019? 2019, after the first two sentences, I was like, oh, yeah, let there be light, huh? Is this going to be, are we going to let there be light? And then we did. I was like, I got it. Yeah, check out the egg, Mark. Check out the heck out of the egg. (laughs) I feel like we should read comments. Because some people only do the audio version. Uh, and he's yeah. reacting to another comment by Mark saying, been meaning to check out the egg, love the Martian. <laughs> and my reaction was, definitely check out the egg. Yes. Okay. So let, let's let's work a little bit backwards. Because with Let There Be Light, he is using a very famous biblical quote. Um, but it's there's a lot of ways that this story does not parallel the typical Judeo-Christian concept of a creator god his motives for doing so and everything that goes with that. So Gerald, uh, in what ways was it different? And did it, knowing you, maybe I'm wrong. Did you get upset at the let there be light because it felt a little bit like, oh, this again. Like, is this? (laughs) This again. (laughs) Was that you? (laughs) Oh, this again. Um, Kinda. Um, uh, It's, it seemed, it's, it's like it's it's too easy, uh, but but then creation starts with light, and and from darkness you have to move into light. I can see that that light is the first thing that you would need. Thinking about it practically, <laughs> you would um, you you would need light and uh, to 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 help you know for to allow things to grow. So so I can I can sort of it didn't annoy me, but I. There was there was just a whole. I mean, I I went straight to the the sort of Bible um, Genesis thing and <laughs> Bible Genesis thing. Yeah, um, that it's and, and and just it just. Having said that, I then did reread it several more times. I typed it all out from the the YouTube video, um, and and trying to then get my head around the idea that. That there's something in nothingness, and and it's it's I don't have the right sort of head for this sort of story. I I, I sort of I, I try to grapple with it and I try to understand it, but I'm always trying to 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 make practical connections to things that you know translating it into into my language, and and I need to think. In sort of theoretical, um, sort of in a theoretical manner. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess what I'm hearing you say, is Jake, you're very much the engineer brain, and that idea of there being something in nothingness that a lot of creation theories come back to is a difficult one for you. And also, there, who is the philosopher Andy might know who says the idea that there ever was nothingness is absurd when we've never known nothingness to exist. There's only ever been something. So the idea that we assume there was a nothing before something is like some sort of human brain fart that isn't rooted in anything we've ever observed. Um, who is that guy? Uh, but anyway, so... Um, yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I don't know who that is. But um, what I liked about 
the using there will be light, uh, let there be light is it's a great shorthand for in case you missed it, he is creating a world. It very quickly lets everyone know this is what we're doing right now. Um, but the build up to that line was nothing like the Judeo Christian uh, creation story that it forces you to reconcile with those differences. And you look like you want to say something. I mean, I wouldn't say nothing like it's a, it's a different take. It's grounded in, in, I'm going to use finger quotes now, science, but it's <laughs> right. It's a still an act of creation. I don't know why you think it's so different. He didn't well, use some days. True. He didn't use some days. I meant more just the idea that, um, there is this entity that is extremely lonely and that is what's inspiring it to do it instead of like, if you look up like, oh, why did God create man or why did God create the universe? It's like, because that was his will and it gave him pleasure so that he could have people to worship him. Like, it's like a very different, the intentionality is very different. Um, and what you were saying earlier, the idea that he sort of splits himself up into, um, uh, it, it's everything that he created is also different than the Judeo-Christian concept where yeah. God. I remember a part where he creates man in his own image. Yeah. Yeah. He creates man <laughs> in his own image, but he is still a separate entity apart from it. We're here. It's like not. He's clear. already like three entities. Like it's yeah. not, it's not a whole thing. If you yeah, can be but... three, you can be infinite. It doesn't matter. I don't think it's that different. And like creating them from loneliness isn't, that's the same thing as a creation born out of love. Love and loneliness are the same thing. Just speaking personally. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. It's just the, the, the intention felt different when I read it. Um, it. There was something about this that was almost more like Hindu in my reading. Like, you know, like, like the... Um, isn't it hey. Brahma's like floating in like the cosmic milky ocean and a lotus like sprouts from his navel or something like it's and that's where from which he creates the earth like there's sort of like this uh more dreamy drifting loneliness feeling to it than than the judeo-christian one you know you know it'd be good if you like a story like that the egg by andy weir <laughs> hey i've yeah. heard of that yeah it's just a much better version of some of the same ideas in this okay, story. Okay, we will read it on the podcast. <laughs> you know what? We won't even do my awesome game. We'll do it <laughs> next week. <laughs> okay. But aside from the creation theories, uh, there's also just pure solipsism that I wanted to get to that we talked a little, we talked a lot about in Slack before coming on here. Um, so, Andy, can you do a quick, quick recap of what solipsism is and why this story can also uh, be depicting that uh yeah okay so real quick uh solipsism is dumb mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah anything <laughs> else you want to add <laughs> it's 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 the idea that you can't know anything outside of your own internal like life or you know depending on how drastic you go your own mental impressions but that you have no evidence that external reality exists so or that as far anyone else as exists any, one person knows they are the only person. Right. And okay. It's stupid. So it is. Stu okay. I don't want to say it is stupid. It I is. think it's, a, it's an interesting thought experiment. And this story really embodies that really well. If, cause he, cause one of the things that struck me about the stories, he's like, Oh, so this entity is already capable of dreaming and his dreams that's fake. But this thing that he magically makes manifest that are really not at all different uh, from a dream. Scientifically that's real. makes manifest. Yeah, but he has no way to scientifically prove it. Right. Same as solipsism. Like you can't, <laughs> the way that solipsism works is you can't prove the negative. Like you mm -hmm. can't, you know what I mean? It's one of those. So it's like, okay, he thinks he created other beings that have their own separate consciousness, but he has no way to prove that. Um, so if you see this as just a manifestation of his version of reality, then it's all about solipsism. I mean, anyways, we can talk for hours about solipsism, but there's nobody else to listen to it. <laughs> solipsism is arguing with yourself all the time. Yeah. Hey, you know what you say after you punch a solipsist in the face, right? No, what? Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> ah. uh, How many of these do you have? Those, those, those were the two. Cool. <laughs> <laughs>
Mark is shaking his head forlornly. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Indeed. I, I, I suspect Mark was hoping for a slightly more intellectual discussion of the story. Than, I think it is plenty intellectual. <laughs> These well, jokes are great. Mark, if you're into solipsism, just imagine a version of us saying the things you want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm trying to see my own notes here. Uh, what, you have notes? I always have notes. Yeah. Yeah. You're good. Mm -hmm. So um, either way, whether it's just a consciousness creating a uh, some kind of reality that it could distract itself from its loneliness with, whether it's that or some sort of creator entity actually creating something. Um, there's this idea, going back to what Joe was saying, this hard idea that this entity claims there's nothing, whereas its own existence is something and is trying to solve that problem. That's the, um, always goes back to what the sort of uh, creator myths kind of go back to. Did you guys find it, compelling like yeah i don't even know if i phrase that question correctly like the idea that it's this one tiny consciousness that apparently can dream in a sea of nothingness and that fact alone is a problem was that compelling enough i th i think for me it was compelling enough because the story is is so short it's it's only 500 words or so um <clears throat> so, I, I, I mean, in a in a way, the first third of it is is you know is this this character, let's call it, um, being a bit sort of describing that there's nothing, and it's it's both really boring and really entertaining at the same time. Oh, I didn't think it was boring. Well, it, it, I, I admired I admired how the writer wrote it because it was sort of compelling, but but it wasn't you know it was just saying the same thing in different ways over and over and over again. Um, so and and it was quite how how this character came to realize came to. Um, create this this idea this notion that it could solve this nothingness by creating stuff um is is quite an interesting concept it's quite a a, a, a sort of interesting idea that and, and and to to ground those with with sort of purely practical it, it says his torments were those of boredom loneliness mental and physical sterility and he he thinks he it thinks when he's created this stuff uh it will provide experience companionship adventure mental exercise entertainment warmth love the sound of voices the touch of hands so so he's he's grounding what he's planning to do in very practical dare i say down to earth experiences which 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 is sort of quite interesting that it sort of grounds the story in 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 things that 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 a dumb dumbo like me could could understand um so that so that was quite that was quite interesting i found that quite interesting mm -hmm. so i feel like so what you're saying is the idea that here's here is an entity that has nothing around it and the thing that it is imagining that it is striving for the thing that it creates are the things that we already identify with um yeah 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 Andy, you were going to say something. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what I meant when I said I like the shape of the story. Like mm -hmm. the, this is the kind of story I'll read all the time, just not this particular instantiation of it. <laughs> For instance, I might recommend the egg or the last question <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but why do you think this one didn't hold up for you? What was this well, one missing? It was missing. Uh, awesome AIs that zoom around the space the universe on spaceships. That's cool. What if you just throw one of those in there, right? <laughs> what he's saying is it's missing boy stuff. <laughs> well, or the egg has uh, a guy 
and his family coping with his own death. That's cool too. Mm -hmm. So this is missing, I guess, a thing that happens. Mm. But isn't the clue to why the story is set up this way in the title? So that title, So Solution, in the way that I read it, is building to the sort of inevitability of life as we know it. So the arc of the story is kind of, uh, well, is demonstrating that inevitability. Yeah, but that doesn't make it more interesting than spaceships. <laughs> Like you can have that and also a spaceship. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a lot more generous with it. Though I will say the YouTube comments was a lot that was like, I read this when I was a kid, it gripped me then. So I think your idea where this is like a less mature version of stories that have been done in a more like literary mature way maybe tracks a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, Isaac Asimov's the last question was only like seven months later. Uh, right, but the maturity you know, isn't chronological. <laughs> it's in the mind but, of the author. Like the egg was only like 2009 ish. So, egg on my face. <laughs> yeah. Mark feels like he has egg on his face. Uh. <laughs> uh by Andy Weir. Yeah. yeah. But, but when I what I mean by sort of like maturity is the maturity of these thoughts. And right now in 2019, we have people who are writing about these things at different points. At, you know, the Eric Frank Russell point, the Asimov point, the Weir point. Like everyone is in a different place um, in their understanding of this. So if you give this to someone who's read a lot of this stuff already, maybe they're just like, oh my God, there's people who've done this better. But if you give this to someone who hasn't read any of this, this is that spark for them, which is why I think in the YouTube comments, there's a lot of people who said, oh, I read this as a kid and it really gripped me then. Yeah. Oh. And actually that was when I was doing a little bit of research on this. Uh, that's what a lot of people had said, like, oh, I read this and this is what started me on science fiction, mm -hmm. or I read this mm -hmm. and this is what started my thoughts in this way. And I was like, oh yeah. It can start. It's a starter. That's what I mean by I think it's more accessible. Um, yeah. Yeah. Know. But I, I read think... the last question first. <laughs> but yeah, did you read think, the last I... question first before other stories like this? Or had you already been steeped in science fiction reading by the time you read that? I mean, I've already been steeped in science fiction. I wasn't necessarily steeped in create well yeah i was pretty steeped in creation myth okay so my point stands go ahead gerald <laughs> i win i dunked all over andy and now just, gerald can speak. yeah j just just as a, a sort of side note if if uh, if mark is feeling bad because because we we didn't like the story this this is the whole point of this podcast that that we can like or dislike stories it it doesn't matter and you don't have to recommend stories that we like it's it's our own opinions it's all very subjective and and we might be talking a lot. Well, <laughs> the boys on this podcast might be talking a load of nonsense, and and it might be the best story ever written. It's Why do I get a pass? I love that I get a pass, but I don't know how I've earned that pass. <laughs> I've well, definitely earned you're... not getting a pass. Well, you're positive about it. We we are anything but. Yeah, I I think I think it's very tight for what it wants to do. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I mean, it is that if you're gonna if you're gonna do this story, do it in five hundred words, and he did. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else we want to add? No, it's just that we should really read two. the egg. <laughs> okay. Well, we, we will. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, my niece is frozen. Uh oh. Uh oh. Don't freeze, Anais. Are you back? Back? Am I back? Ah. Yes, there I am. Right, she's back. Great. Yeah, you froze. Yeah, you froze for a little. Okay. Yep. Get, okay. get that boyfriend off the internet. I can't. He's addicted right now to Super Smash Brothers online. Okay. <laughs> so is my fourteen-year-old. Well, hmm? it's it's well. for ages. What seven and up? He is end up. Yeah. He is in that category. <laughs> end up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's rate this and then get on to next week's story, the game. Uh, 
I, this is, right, the, the, the fact that I can't understand much of this story and, and the stuff behind it is not a fault of the story itself. So I think what it does, it does very well. <laughs> Six. <laughs> Mark is giving it a six. Mark's giving it a six. Yeah, Mark, that's not going to influence me, Mark. You want to um, reserve that six for after you read the egg. And then yeah. it's like maybe you should give it a five for now. And 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 Mark understands the scoring system. So <laughs> so well done, Mark. Well done. Um, so I think it's uh, I in a way I quite like it. I know I criticized the opening, said it was a bit boring, but actually it was it was it, it was sort of in, in almost like a gothic way describing what was going on. So, so actually, I, I'm I'm going to give it a four. There you go. I love your tone, as if you're so generous. <laughs> give it a four. Wait, well, you you didn't know what I was thinking of giving it before. <laughs> <laughs> Andy. Well, I mean. I really thought Gerald was going to come in under me on this one, but I'm going to give it a nice three, like a very nice oh, three. It so it's hard. fine. This story's fine. It's fine. All right. Uh, how? Okay, I'm just going to come in at a four and a half. That's where I'm at. <laughs> okay, coming in at a four and a half, and I think that's about right. Okay, so. Um, what are we? What are you guys submitting for next week? Oh, crikey! Well, I'm submitting um, Flannery O'Connor, "Good Country People." It's um, it's eight about eight thousand words, so it's a little bit longer than this one. But Flannery O'Connor. Okay, Andy. I will be submitting "The Stone" by Louise Erdrich. Okay, so the game is one. Uh, is a format that I haven't done in a while. My favorite, which is the true or false. Where I'm going to give you a statement. And you have to tell me if I made it up or if it's true. So the premise is um, in the story, uh, the entity creates rules for his new world. Uh, so the Bible has a lot of rules and some of them are pretty funny now, many millennia later. Uh, so I'm going to give you a rule. You need to tell me if that's an actual biblical rule or if I made it up. Yes. I'm very excited. Yeah. I need to score Good. too. Okay. So um, it's going to go Gerald first, then Andy. Okay. The first one. We're very excited about this. Aren't I you? love these. These are my favorite. <laughs> They're super fast and I get to make things up, which is my favorite thing. Yes. Lie. <laughs> okay. Uh, so is this an actual rule? Don't eat owls. <laughs> <laughs> um. Owls, owls could could be considered to be quite wise. So yeah, true. It's a true rule. It is true. You get a no. point. It's from Leviticus 11, uh, 13 to 19. Okay, the text is great. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle, the oh. ossifrage, the osprey, and the vulture, and the kite after his kind. Every raven after his kind, and the owl, and the night hawk, and the cuckoo, and the hawk after his kind, and the little owl, and the cormorant, and the great owl, and the swan, oh, wow. and the pelican, and the gear eagle, and the stork, and the heron after her kind, and the lapwing, and the bat. So it was a lot of and the bat. There's a lot of things you can't eat, but owl is mentioned many times. Yeah. All three all three kinds. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> eat no kinds of owls. No. Big that. kind, little kind, regular kind. Can't eat them. <laughs> can't eat them. All right. Damn. Andy, is this a rule? Never use cow dung as mortar. I think that's false. I think it makes great mortar. That is false. Gerald, if your slave refuses freedom, pierce their ear. I think that's false. It's true. Oh, no. <laughs> Exodus. Really? 21, 5 through 6, yeah. And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him unto the door and unto the doorpost. And his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall and he shall serve him forever. <laughs> like, basically, wow. it's to humiliate him. Uh, yeah, because he's supposed to want freedom. <clears throat> Andy, never bury a man with his socks off. Uh, socks off. 
I will say true. False. I made it up. <laughs> no, <that's laughs> they gotta have a bunch of Barian rules in there, though. That's, yeah, probably. <laughs> It'd be funny if I made one up and it actually was a real one, and I just sort of like lucked into it. That'd be wild. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Isn't that what happened anyway, Richard? Oh no, it didn't. <laughs> and that might have happened with the Philip K. Dick quiz I made. Okay. Anyway, uh, Gerald. Oh, yeah. Never boil a baby goat in its mother's milk. True. That one is true. Uh, mm. Exodus again. Okay, Andy. Make sure no one falls off your roof. That, I mean, true. Yeah. 100% true. That's a thing you need to make sure, Deuteronomy. Okay. <laughs> Gerald. That's just good neighbors. Just good neighbors. <laughs> Gerald. Make sure your father-in-law always has fresh water at his bedside. No, that's false. That is false. And Andy, if a blind man bumps into you, buy him a loaf of bread. False. It is false. Yeah. All right. Gerald has four points. Andy has three. Oh. Gerald wins by one point. Yay. My tiebreaker, my tiebreaker was how many commandments are there in the Old Testament? It's a trick question, isn't it? Um, it's not a trick question. There's the 10 famous ones that Moses heard directly, but then it just kind of kept, you know, it kept adding them. It just kind of kept going for a while. Right. Was there about 21 or something? 22? Oh, you wish. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think the answer is there's more than that. Then. 133. In the Old Testament, it's 613. Oh, wow. Wow. And in the New Testament, it's like over 1,000. It's a lot, oh, awesome. it's a lot. It's a lot of things. There's a lot. I mean, you need to know, make sure no one falls off your room. I mean, that's not in there, but yeah, it's a lot of rules. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. So, Gerald, what are we reading next week? Next week, we are reading Flannery O'Connor and Good Country People. Okay. But before you go, escape your literary loneliness by discussing the story on our Facebook group, The Literary Roadhouse Readers, or on Twitter at Lit Roadhouse, or our website, literaryroadhouse.com. Immerse yourself in a fuller dream world of fiction by joining the Literary Roadhouse Book Club, where we discuss a novel each month. And lastly, this story has inspired me to create my own reality with its own religion and fabulous rules. Support my shiny new cult and our podcast expenses at patreon.com slash literary roadhouse. Every bit helps. And as always, share this podcast with the creator God in your life. Until next time, read a good story. Of which I have many.